This is a fairly complex tank rig and uh, model that I created in Maya. Okay, as you can see, there's not really a whole lot of controls to the rig, but uh, let me show you what it can do. Okay, let's start with the drive control. This control will allow me to uh, move the tank forward and backwards, and it keeps the tread system in sync with how far we actually move the tank. We can also rotate it, and this steers the tank, and you can see here each tread is moving in the opposite directions, just like they would on a real tank. Um, we can we can move this tank in any direction or orientation and the treads will always move correctly. There's also a few tread adjustment controls that we have here. Let me just uh, open the side up so we can see it. We can control the uh, how slack the, the tread is, tread chain, and we can slide the chain and we can also drive the chain. And that's independent from the actual drive control. Let me just close that down. Now if we want to control the wheels of the tank, we have two options. We can just key them by hand by moving them up and down like that. Or we can connect them to a floor plane. And that's extremely simple to do. And let me show you what I mean by that. Let me just grab a, um, a poly mesh plane and I will give it some subdivisions. Now I'm just going to select some random points and pull them around with the soft selection turned on and let's just try and make an uneven surface uh, I'm not going to go too crazy with it but uh, that's probably good enough okay let me just name that and okay now I'm going to set the constraint now as the tank moves or rotates in any direction you can see the wheels being affected by the uneven ground okay moving on to the hull control okay this control uh, allows the the tank hull suspension to bounce and sway in in any direction affecting the moving parts below. It's kind of like a, a glorified hip control on a biped rig. It's very fast, easy to use and really adds uh, a different level of realism to the whole motion of the tank. Okay, the turret control. This one's pretty simple. It's basically an aim constraint with a uh, few added attributes. I'll just go through those. Uh, we can wiggle the barrel and we can aim the barrel up and down or we can actually just move the control which does the same thing. Uh, but the really cool thing about this control is the, the fire and power attributes. Uh, when I drag the slider, you can see that the entire tank reacts to the gun being fired. And this works uh, whichever direction I point the gun. So I'm going to just aim it over here and uh, try it again. There you go. It gives a full uh, recoil from the, uh, the weapon. Okay, now on top of that is a power attribute. Now this allows me to control the power of the shot. If I lower it to one, you can see that the uh, the tank recoil and, and the barrel kick just is is pretty minimal. But when we uh, crank it up to ten, it gives it gives quite a quite a big jolt. The entire tank mesh, uh, especially if we have a lot of objects and characters in the scene, gets pretty heavy. So uh, there's an option to switch to a low resolution mesh, and that's primarily for uh, animation purposes but this moves exactly the same way as the high resolution mesh all the same moving parts just less verts takes up the same volume so it's fairly easy to know what's going on between each version I can also control how bright the lights are on the tank I have a few um, I have a headlight control here uh, side lights brake light but moving up to the top of the turret uh, there's the machine gun and this works in a similar way to the the main gun we have the uh, the aim constraint which moves the machine gun turret and the actual gun independently but the machine gun just has the one attribute and there's a lot happens when I move this slider uh, each numerical hole number on this attribute represents one shot fired and with each shot fired we'll see a fair amount of moving parts we can have the, the gun recoil uh, there's the driving rod which strikes the bullet and also the stripper bullets that enter the gun so if we just drag the slider you can see it all working together and you can see the bullet chain enter and uh, get pulled into the gun. There should be a bullet case flying out of the, uh, the side of the gun. So in order to get that to work, all I need to do is just set two keys on that same attribute. I need to tell Maya when to start and when to stop firing the gun. So if I just set a key here and end it right there, and I'll hit play, and you can see the shell cases being ejected from the side of the gun and bouncing on various parts of the tank. This arrow here will actually allow me to control 
the direction that the shell casings are being ejected out of the gun. And again, this, this entire gun mechanism works whichever way I orient the tank, it doesn't matter. And the bullet casings will still interact with the rest of the tank. Let me just play the animation again and I can show you that it doesn't matter where you point this gun, even in real time here, the, the casings will always still fly out in the right direction and bounce on the appropriate part of the tank. This entire setup also works in the uh, the low resolution version of the mesh too. Let me just switch that over and show you and, and play it again. 